right now on 10 News at 11. Heavy winds and dry conditions have San Diegans preparing for the worst. SDG&E ready to cut power to thousands of homes. Challenge fire crews face that could make their powerful air support ineffective. Hours after a high school's big celebration, tragedy strikes. The deadly construction accident that has Monte Vista High School reeling. We're just trying to go to the haunted trails and you know, end up getting scammed. Halloween fun at Balboa Park ruined by a thief. The scam that has the haunted trail turning people away. Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. Racing for the worst, more than 20 San Diego County communities getting ready to turn off the power. It's SDG&E's response to red flag conditions and high fire danger. You can see those communities listed on this map. From Ramona to Rancho Santa Fe, many of the areas that have suffered some of the worst wildfires in county history. And we have team coverage starting with our tenure reporter Anthony Pura, who is in Rancho Santa Fe. People there say they are preparing in case SDG&E does pull the plug on them. Anthony. That's right, no winds right now here in Rancho Santa Fe, but people have been warned when those winds start up, their power could be cut. Now people say that is very inconvenient, but they would much prefer it to a fire. At Cafe Positano, owner Tim Cusack is playing the waiting game. They've been warned of a possible power outage Thursday due to high fire danger. It's not fun when the power goes out. It could mean his refrigerated foods will have to be tossed out. His coffee shop has two locations in Rancho Santa Fe. He's prepared his staff at both for the possible outage. I'm very concerned about how quickly the power is going to come back on because I risk losing potentially thousand dollars, thousands of dollars in inventory. You know, we just try to keep our chest freezers cool. We keep extra packets of ice in there. Cheryl Salman and her family also received the warning from SDG&E. In October 2007, the Witch Creek Fire ripped through the area. 37 homes were lost in Rancho Santa Fe, more than 1,100 across the county. High winds are forcing power companies across California to consider shutting down power in certain communities to lessen the risk of fires sparked by faulty electric lines. I always keep um, headlamps in our kitchen cabinets. So I know exactly where they are. We keep them with our batteries and I'm able to pass one out to every member of our family. I guess from my point of view, I'd rather have them shut off the power and not have to risk having a fire. Nearly 34,000 customers were warned in San Diego County. That number is close to a million statewide. The high winds could also create problems for firefighters. Fire retardant could dissipate when hit by winds blowing stronger than 30 miles per hour and the drops become less accurate. Firefighters say their planes could still be deployed to spot the spread of fires under that scenario, but it would be up to their ground crews to get it under control. Now SDG&E says that they are in contact with school districts that could be impacted by these possible outages, but as of tonight, no school districts have announced any closures for tomorrow. We're reporting live tonight, Anthony Pura, 10 News. Anthony, thank you. And our meteorologist Angelica Campos continues our team coverage tracking these winds and the red flag warning that is here too. That's right, red flag warning starting tomorrow at noon and it will stay in effect all the way through tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. You can see we're not the only ones. Much of Southern California is included in the red flag warning. The strongest winds are expected by late tomorrow night into early Friday morning. The wind gust will be up to 50 miles an hour, but an average the winds will be streaming from the east northeast at 20 to 35 miles per hour. Isolated areas could see See wind gust of up to 60 miles an hour with the greater chances closer to the higher elevations. All right, thanks, Angelica. Meanwhile, Governor Gavin Newsom was in San Diego today just as the backcountry communities are getting ready for possible power outages. The governor praised SDG&E but expressed frustration at PG&E cutting power to almost a million people in the rest of the state. Well, because I'm a citizen and, uh, you know, my kids are at home right now. Uh, you know, I want them in school. SDG&A says it will be working closely with fire crews to determine whether it will need to shut the power down. SDG&A says it is a last resort. County Supervisor Diane Jacob has instead called on the utility company to harden power lines and infrastructure. Right now, more than 1 million people in 34 counties are in the dark. The majority of those are in Northern California. People there have been stocking up on water, ice and filling up their gas tanks. Hospitals, medical centers, and caregivers are worried about the extended time with no power. 
Many are frustrated, calling it an unnecessary and drastic step. Well, I think they jumped the gun, you know, in my opinion. I mean, there's no breeze. You know, there's still dew on my car. Um, you know, turning it off is good, but wait till it's dangerous. BG&E says it could take several days for power to be restored once the red flag conditions subside. Breaking news, dozens of firefighters are heading up to Mariposa County to help fight the Briceburg fire. San Diego Fire and Rescue sent three brush engines and a strike team leader. Two more brush engines were sent by other local fire agencies. That fire has exploded to 4,400 acres with only 15% containment. The San Diego crews going there can be deployed up to two weeks and depending on the fire could stay longer or be redirected to another fire. And you can stay on top of the red flag conditions anytime by downloading the free 10 News mobile app. We also have a map of the communities facing outages on 10news.com. All right, breaking news. One person is dead after a police chase through Chula Vista. Officers say the driver was thrown from the car in the crash. A photo, a photo journalist, Paul Anderick, is live in our 10 News Breaking News Tracker with an update. So, Paul, what can you tell us? This all started around 8 o'clock tonight here uh, off F Street near Hilltop where a police officer attempted to pull over this car that you see wrecked down the street here. Let's show you some uh, video of what the aftermath of the, the ensuing crash looks like. Now, that officer tried to pull that vehicle over for having a problem with its registration tags. At first, that pursuit started out as only about, about 30 to 40 mile an hour slow speed chase, but as it wound down and came down Hilltop, the speeds increased up to 60 to 70 miles an hour. Uh, it uh, continued to run through several stop signs uh, with three people inside. It eventually lost control at the intersection here of Oxford and Hilltop, ended up uh, crashing into the front uh, uh, pillars of a fence surrounding a house and ejecting the driver of that car. One of the people uh, was able to get out and try to run away. He dropped the knife. He was taken into custody. There was a female that was unconscious inside the car. And uh, again, that driver that was ejected, officers immediately began performing CPR on that uh, driver that was ejected. Unfortunately, he died at the hospital. Those two other occupants that were in the car were also transported to the hospital. The uh, police tell us that they did find drugs and a gun inside that car. Uh, Hilltop Drive will be closed for some time. We're going to stay on scene and continue to bring you updates on 10 News this morning. Back to you. All right, thank you, Paul. The death of a woman found in a Cardiff home has been ruled a homicide tonight. That's according to the San Diego County Sheriff's Department. Earlier today, the coroner's office identified the woman as 43-year-old Sabrina Lukowski. Last night, the Sheriff's Department was called to the property after neighbors reported a foul smell. After getting a search warrant, they found Lukowski's body inside a back unit. This is just eerie being on my same street here that that happened and that I've actually talked to that person who lived in the back in that unit. Lukowski was reported missing to the sheriff's department on October 3rd. On social media, her friends say she was missing back on September 20th. Anyone with information is asked to call the sheriff's department. 35 years later, a retired police officer recalls his chilling encounter with a serial killer in San Diego. He talks about killing people like you and I talked about going on vacation. You know, he's just, he's just cold. In 1984, Wayne Spees arrested the man the FBI now calls the most prolific serial killer in history. As 10 News reporter Michael Chen explains, the FBI now needs the public's help to find justice for dozens of his victims. September 1984, downtown, late at night along 10th Avenue, 22-year-old Lori Barrows is walking to a friend's condo. According to court documents, the victim walked a block and a half before someone grabbed her from behind, choking her and then throwing her into a car. Her attacker, Samuel Little, would rape her and choke her unconscious before tossing her out of his Ford Thunderbird at a vacant lot near the 94. A month later, rookie cop Wayne Spees and his partner checked out that same lot. And then right about between the tree and the building there. 35 years later, he took us to the site, now a Costco parking lot. Pull in, uh, we see a parked car. Came out from the back seat, um, and he's zipping his pants up. Spees recalls Little insisting he and his wife were just leaving. Wedged inside the car was Tanya Jackson, a prostitute, naked and bloodied. Little had choked her unconscious. Spees arrested him and spent several hours with him at the hospital while evidence was collected. He said, I didn't rape that I just kicked out of her. 
And then you also said that um, I'm going to kill that whore. Little served two and a half years for those two crimes before his release. In 2012, he was arrested after DNA matched him to three murders in Los Angeles. Two of them occurred months after he was released for the San Diego crime. The FBI says he's now confessed to strangling 93 women between 1970 and 2005 all across the country. 43 cases are unverified. The FBI releasing victim portraits drawn by Little in hopes of tips. 15 of those cases are from the Los Angeles area. When you look into his eyes, what did you see? No remorse. Calculating. He was evil. Michael Chen, 10 years. Most of Little's victims were in uh, vulnerable groups involved in prostitution or in drugs. Their bodies sometimes went unidentified and their deaths uninvestigated. A warning tonight from a longtime Balboa Park attraction. Scammers targeting people looking to save money on haunted trail tickets. One man found out the hard way. It just wasn't worth it. We're not scared! <laughs> The haunted trail at Balboa Park is a popular place to go this time of year, but it's apparently also become a prime target for scammers. Omar Farha bought six tickets on the OfferUp app last weekend. It was $15 a ticket. A big discount from the advertised price of $25. And in this case, it was a deal too good to be true. I thought maybe she got them from like a, a radio. You know how they give free, free tickets from the radio and she just didn't want to go. But when he and his family tried to use them, staff informed him they'd been flagged. It was a stolen credit card and um, we got scammed. Owner Greg DeFata says over the last few years, they've seen an increase in online scams. So they started changing the way they operate. We'll just ask you for your credit card, which is and you show us that and the uh, ticket and your license, you're good to go. He says the only way they can guarantee a ticket is if you buy it from their website or at the gate. It even says on the ticket, not for resale. So if you're buying a ticket from somebody, you know, you're taking that chance. We're just trying to go to the haunted trails and... <laughs> no, end up getting scammed. 